Hey, good afternoon, uh, gentlemen. Uh, Dr. Harry Shields here. Uh, today, the day that I'm recording this video, is March the 14th, 2017. Um, it's been a little bit of a change in my schedule just to give you an update, and that is the fact that uh, I was scheduled for surgery yesterday, Monday the 13th, and then my surgeon called, and uh, because of an emergency case that he had, asked if I would move it back to uh, Friday, or move it ahead to Friday, I should say. So this coming Friday, um, March the 17th, uh, I'm going to have the bypass surgery that was scheduled. Hey, I appreciate, I know uh, you are praying for me. I saw some of you during my modular class a week ago, and I know you're praying for me. I appreciate that uh, very, very much. Uh, your kindness and your prayers uh, mean a lot. I would especially ask that you would pray for Carol because uh, this means a time when uh, I won't be with her to help take care of her. Our daughter-in-law uh, is going to be with her a couple of nights and then there are some other uh, ladies who are coming in to give her assistance. So I'm just really grateful to the Lord for that. Um, I'm not sure exactly how to give you updates in terms of uh, how I'm doing, but I'll do my best along the way. I'm putting a lot of things together right now, so um, I want to communicate as very best, uh, the very best way that I can. So here's what I'm going to do right now. This video is to help you with respect to week eight, and I hope to do a couple of more videos uh, prior to returning to the classroom so that you can keep up uh, to speed. This week's topic uh, has to do with the subject of homosexuality. I am positive that you have talked about this subject in professional ethics, uh, as you should. I think it's also a, an issue that you need to talk about and, and know about with respect to local church ministry because you're going to uh, hear about it all the time. If I were to add another aspect to this topic, it would probably be the issue of uh, transgender identity. And uh, we could spend a lot of time talking about that as well, and perhaps we will before the semester is over. With that in mind, I do want to call something to your attention. I mentioned this to you the last time. I sent an email to all of you. Uh, I don't know what your availability is on uh, April the 25th. That's a Tuesday at Wheaton Bible Church. There is a conference that will be held on this issue of uh, transgender identity. Uh, Dr. Mark Yarhouse, uh, who's at Regent University, one of the leading experts on this subject, uh, and is an evangelical. Uh, he will be presenting uh, the topic, and so if you could come, I think it would cost you as a student about $10, so if you could afford that and make your way out to Wheaton Bible Church, the seminar is from 8 a.m. until 3 p.m. I think you would uh, benefit from it. Assuming that my health might allow me to to go. I'm planning on going to the conference, and uh, so perhaps we can catch up there as well. So all of that is to say, I hope you'll keep that in mind. Now let me tell you uh, some procedures here as to what I'm planning to do. Uh, on the Blackboard page, I'm going to upload uh, this week, and I, as I said, I'm hoping to do another video tomorrow, so I will upload this video. You can listen to the video, probably be 15 to 20 minutes in length, and then um, what I would encourage you to do is to also uh, start by looking at the PowerPoint presentations and, and go through and look at the PowerPoint because it's more of a, in a question-answer format. And so, uh, especially in our re reflection uh, portion of the class, I, I would hope that you would continue to work the procedure that I've been presenting to you, and I'll talk about that in, in just a little bit. Um, so I've talked to you about uh, what I'm going to post. I'm going to post my lecture. Uh, it will be there pretty much word for word as to what I would say if I were with you in class. Then not only will I post the lecture, I'll post the PowerPoint. I would encourage you to go to the PowerPoint uh, first. And then um, I'm going to take you through the reflection just briefly to talk about some things and uh, just a very quick overview of the topic at hand, which you will be reading in my lecture notes. Okay, I hope that's understanding. Along the way, um, if you have any questions about anything that I've asked or uh, anything that I have m uh, mentioned in uh, the written lectures, don't hesitate to give me a call. I'm hoping that I'll be able to respond to uh, email in about uh, two weeks after I'm released, one or two weeks after I'm released from the hospital. 
and so I'd be glad to answer your questions uh, via email if I can. Again, thank you very much for your prayers, and allow me just to pray for you right now as a student and as a class, and we'll ask that God will continue to equip us for life and ministry. Father, thank you for this day. I'm grateful for technology that I can communicate with uh, my student colleagues to encourage them in the faith, to encourage them in ministry. Continue to build them up in their most holy faith. Use them in uh, uh, just mighty ways, not only now, but in the, in the future. I look forward, Father, to being back with them to hear what you're doing in their lives and that we can study and reflect together. I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. One other thing I forgot to tell you, and that is uh, make sure that you continue to submit your assignments on time. Uh, just send them to me via email. You'll have the assignments that are there in class. Now, you'll, you'll see some things that I would encourage you to do, like at the end of uh, the lecture, you'll see there's a case study. I don't expect you to send that to me. But just the regular assignments that are in the syllabus and for the weekly schedule, send those uh, to me. So sometimes be reading assignments, sometimes there'll be position papers, and a trend watch as well. I believe that here in week eight, you would be submitting a trend watch and a position paper as well. So keep that in mind. Send those uh, assignments to me uh, just as they are listed in uh, the syllabus. Here's how I'd like to do our reflection today. Remember what we normally do? Uh, spend a few minutes on a reflection, that, that reflection aspect, looking at scripture, uh, many times we'll relate to the topic at hand. And then the other thing that I would uh, call to your attention is that um, uh, after we do the reflection and we look at the process, I call it the truth process, uh, finding a, a universal truth. Remember the truth process. You look at the text. You try to answer the major issues. You do your exegesis. And then you summarize it by saying, what's the topic? What's the tension? Uh, every passage has a tension. And then after that, what is the response to that tension? How do we answer that tension, which is also a question? And then you put those two together, and you will have a universal truth, a transforming truth, a big idea. And that would be the kind of truth that you'd be presenting to your congregation, the kind of truth you'd be presenting to your, to your class. And uh, then that truth uh, acronym there, the H stands for... Uh, heeding or handling. How, if I have this truth, if it's what the text is teaching, then how do I handle it? How do I take them through the text to see that this truth is true, uh, what it means, and how it relates to life? All right. So that's a little bit of an overview of what we're doing. Now, the text that you would be looking at today, if I were there, would be 1 Peter chapter 1, uh, verses 13 through 25. I'm going to read this text. I'm reading it from the Christian Standard Bible. A little bit of a word on that. Uh, Christian Standard Bible is a revision of the Holman Christian Standard Bible. And it uh, came out in March. I picked up a copy because I really appreciated the Holman Christian Standard. I believe it's one of the most accurate translations out there. I believe it's one of the most readable uh, and yet accurate translations. So I, I commend it to you. Um, and so that's uh, where my reading is coming from today. I'll make a couple of comments as, as I get through. So here's the text. Here's what we would have been reading and reflecting on in class. Therefore, with your minds ready for action, be sober-minded and set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. I'm going to stop there and make a comment that the therefore takes us back to the preceding context. You want to look at that context because it will help to determine what the topic tension is, okay? So you want to know what, what was uh, Peter talking about that provoked him, caused him to say, therefore, um, therefore, here's what I want to talk about in light of what I've just told you. So therefore, and then he says, with your minds ready for action, and the Christian Standard Bible. Now here I just made a case. <laughs> I said I think it's one of the most accurate uh, readable translations. What's interesting about this is that when my translation says be sober-minded, that's actually a participle. It's not a main verb. The main verb is coming up. I, I found it interesting that in several of the translations, and those of you who use the ESV will say, well, it ESV translated as a participle. Yeah, that's true. 
I also found out that the New American Standard uh, updated version translates it the same way as the Christian Standard version. The reason for that is because the translators think that in this case, this first participle is uh, really more of an imperative, more of a command. So, again, I'll start over. Uh, keep this in mind. This is what Peter is saying. Therefore, with your minds ready for action, be sober-minded and set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires of your former ignorance, but as the one who called you is holy, you also are to be holy in uh, all your conduct. For it is written, Be holy, because I am holy. If you appeal to the Father who judges impartially according to each one's work, you are to conduct yourselves in reverence during your time living as strangers. For you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, inherited from your fathers, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Like that of an unblemished and uh, spotless lamb, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for you. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified yourselves by your obedience to the truth, so that you show sincere brotherly love for each other uh, from a pure heart, love one another constantly, because you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. For all flesh is like grass, and all its glory like a flower of the grass. The grass withers, and the flower fails, but the word of the Lord endures forever. And this word is the gospel that was proclaimed to you. Okay, this is God's word, and it's God's word for us today to reflect upon, and I would encourage you to do it. Now, as you reflect upon it, as I said just a moment ago, you want to take a look and see what is being said in the larger context. That probably will determine what's your topic tension, the big question is that, that you're going to answer. Then you'll notice in the um, PowerPoint presentation, and it goes through, uh, if you actually use it as a full PowerPoint, you can, you can go through and you'll see that there are questions that I'm asking you and then the answer is revealed. If you look at just the slides, you'll see everything. Um, so I'm just suggesting, why don't you go through it by yourself without looking at my answers and just see how we uh, compare with one another. But you would uh, notice that in this larger context, Peter is talking about the great salvation that people, uh, prior to Peter's writing, yearned for. They wanted to know about that salvation. They wanted to know about the Messiah. Now it's been revealed to the first century saints, and it's been revealed to you. And what do we do in light of the revelation of that great salvation? That's the response. That's the revelation that is the answer to the topic uh, tension. Then, how would you put that together into a single sentence summary? That's what you need to do. And let me just to say quickly, it has something to do, if we have such a great salvation, there's something about our faith. What kind of a faith would that be? I gave it a special name. Let's see what kind of a name you give it as well. Um, so, uh, that's the text. Uh, I would probably close if I were with you face-to-face. -face, I would say to you, all right, in light of the topic that we're going to be addressing today, uh, homosexuality and the homosexual community and how they impact the church, how does this text relate to that issue? What is it calling us to? So, uh, I would encourage you to uh, keep that in mind. Um, and read the text, see how the text relates to our specific topic here today. Now, I'm searching for a book here. I don't know if you can see this or you'll see the title, what that will look like to you. The title of this book uh, is written by Ed Shaw. The title is called Same Sex Attraction and the Church. Same Sex Attraction and the Church. I heard Mr. Shaw on uh, Family Life Today as Carol and I were driving into. Moody um, a couple of weeks ago, and I was fascinated by the interview with him. Mr. Shaw, uh, I believe he is an Anglican pastor in England. I could be wrong in that. He is a pastor, but he is a pastor who um, 
identifies himself as one who has same-sex attraction. And yet, he has lived a celibate life. Um, and he's lived a, a celibate life because of the fact that um, he believes this is what God wants him to do. So all of that is to say, here, here's a good book written by someone who struggled with this issue personally and, and then has lived in a way that is pleasing and honoring to the Lord. So I recommend that book to you. Uh, uh, I, uh, University Press is the publisher. It's called Same Sex Attraction in the Church. Ed Shaw is the author. I hope that will be a uh, book that will be helpful to you. All right, that's the reflection. I um, encourage you to go through uh, the step-by-step, -step, the questions of the truth process and discover a universal truth, a transforming truth. The next thing we would do if we were face-to-face, -face, we would be talking about uh, trends. You are to present a trends analysis for week eight. So what kind of trends did you observe? Uh, you might have gone to Pathios, you might have gone to some other places. Um, here are some things that I observed, and I wouldn't be surprised that some of you noted the same thing. For example, I noticed that there has been a lot of discussion uh, on Pathios and in other places um, about the subject of uh, transgender identity. We talked about that in the seminar that's coming up. Um, one of the bloggers on Pathios, uh, Dr. Olson, and forgetting his first name, I want to say Ted Olson, I don't think that is right, but Dr. Olson has written two very helpful blogs. And I would encourage you to read those blog posts on the issue of transgender identity. Um, so that's something to take a look at. Um, what other issues? Uh, obviously in the news there's a big discussion about health care uh, in America. And if the GOP-led Congress makes some changes, how will a new health care law impact millions of Americans? And how should Christians think about that? Um, sometimes we think uh, in monetary terms, economic terms, and uh, how does Christ want us to think about uh, that issue? Many, many Americans uh, struggle with having health insurance. Um, whatever you think of the Affordable, Affordable Care Act, it has provided insurance for, for many. If we make a change uh, to what is a very costly health program, what will that mean uh, for us? So I'll be anxious to see, to read uh, what your trends analysis uh, happens to be. A lot of different things in the news. How do we as pastors address that? And then after we look at the trends analysis, I would go into the topic at hand. I hope you'll take a look at my notes, uh, my lecture notes that I will upload for you. And you will discover that uh, there are some things we need to think about historically when it comes to the issue of homosexuality in the church. We need to think in terms of how should we as Christians love brothers and sisters who struggle with this issue. And you'll want to note that um, i would made uh, you aware in my notes that Christians have started to make changes in this whole area of how we should view uh, same-sex attraction. I haven't changed my view. I believe the Bible is very clear on this issue, but I do think that we need to be loving and kind with people who struggle with this issue as well. When you get to the end of reading my lecture notes, would you notice there's a case study there? I'd, I'd like you to read that case study. Now, again, it's not an assignment you have to submit to me, but um, I'd, I'd encourage you to read that because you might encounter someone in your church someday uh, who will say to you, listen, my son or my daughter came home from college and they're struggling with same-sex attraction and what should I do? Many times, we, as parents, we tend to uh, respond emotionally. We care about our children, and, and we should care about them. But we should also care about the kingdom of God. We should care about the rule and reign of Jesus in our lives. And so how do you lovingly respond to a parent in your congregation or even someone struggling with uh, same-sex attraction? How do we minister to them? Well, hey, listen... Um, I so appreciate uh, you men uh, watching this video. It'll be about 20 minutes in length when I finish. Uh, thank you for keeping up with your work in class, and I really do look forward to uh, seeing you again. I, I miss you guys and the interaction that we can have together. God bless you. 
Uh, have a wonderful day, and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon.